So today we'll discuss the uh, basics of serial communication. That includes uh, uh, universal synchronous asynchronous uh, receiver and transmitter IC that is 8251 and another very important uh, standard that is RS232C. So we'll discuss them uh, one by one. Uh, this uh, the combination of these topics will be slightly lengthy. So uh, we'll break uh, the presentation into parts so that uh, the topics will be understood one by one. So in the beginning, uh, we'll uh, I'll start with the serial communication, and then in the coming videos, uh, we'll discuss um, RS232 and USART. So first thing, uh, the introduction of the serial communication is that uh, serial communication sends or receives the information bit by bit. Uh, we know that parallel, uh, parallelly, for example, if we talk about 8-bit microprocessor, 8085, then uh, the data bus is of 8-bit and we can simultaneously, uh, parallelly, uh, send or receive 8 bits of data <clears throat> through 8 different channels. Uh, this indeed is a good option because 8 bits uh, is trans 8 bits are transferred parallelly. Uh, so this would be the fastest uh, way to communicate. But the other thing is that if we want to transmit or send the data uh, over a long distance and we want to maintain the same uh, 8 bit or 16 bit or 32 bits or 64 bit, uh, parallelly, that means we need to establish uh, the n number of channels to transmit 8, 16, 32, 64 bit or any uh, other um, combination of the data. So um, this problem, this could be uh, basically a, a big problem because uh, this, um, if we establish eight parallel or 16 parallel lines over the over the large distance then no doubt it will be uh, a very um, uh, costlier because eight or 16 or n number of wires parallelly going from a receiver and a transmitter the other thing is that if we want to have n number of um, transmission lines together then to receive or send them at both the ends at the transmitting uh, transmission as well as the receiving end we need to have uh, a circuit or circuitry that uh, that can process n number of bits parallelly at a time so this the the wire the n number of wires from a transmitter to a receiver over a large distance plus the circuitry involved in the both sides in the transmitting end as well as in the receiving end will make the transmission or the communication very very costly so this cost can be minimized if we transmit the data over a single channel or over a pair of channel bit by bit so if we do that, this particular thing is known as or is, is come, it comes under the category of serial communication because we uh, transmitting or receiving the bits bit by bit. So we, uh, we are not using 8 bits um, parallel transmission. Instead, we are using uh, one channel uh, for 8 bits LSB to MSB or n number of bits right so what is basically uh, the problem or the advantage uh, is in of the serial communication if we use the um, serial communication then obviously we need to have a timing circuitry the timing circuitry measures the time between the data, what is being transmitted, from which channel, from which line, and what is being received at, at a particular time, from which line. We need to maintain all that record. Also, we need to have, we need to design basically a circuitry in such a way that one bit 
from one channel is connected to a single piece of wire that is considered as channel and then when this bit is received then the next bit should be sent when that bit is received then the next bit should be sent from the other channel and so on so if we maintain this particular kind of thing that means uh, we need to maintain proper time proper synchronization however this can be achieved by using a non-synchronous medium um, processes as well so the total or overall uh, we can classify our serial communication in um, synchronous as well as in asynchronous modes we'll discuss later in this presentation later part of this presentation the what is basically a, ser uh, a serial communication which is asynchronous one as and a synchronous one so uh, microcomputer or a processor uses parallel data it is converted to a serial form when we are transmitting and on the receiving this serial data is to be converted into parallel form because microprocessor receives parallel data or sends parallel data but over the long distance we need to transmit a large number of large amount of data over a long distance so we need to convert it into uh, serial data from uh, parallel data from the transmitting end and as we are receiving the re uh, serial data so we need to convert it back uh, into the parallel form so that uh, it can be used for a computer the term serial communication can be understood or can be defined in three main categories the first one is simplex communication the other one is half duplex and the other one the third one that is full duplex simplex data transmission is that type of transmission in which we are using the data transfer uh, transferring the transferring of the data is only in one direction that means the data can be transmitted from one end to another from the other end uh, it cannot be transmitted uh, it can be um, given by a radio or a kind of tv broadcast system because we can receive the signals from uh, the broadcast service to our tv channels as well as to our radios we cannot we from our radios cannot communicate uh, to the host right we cannot send back so it's a simplex trans uh, mode of transmission because we are using the signal flow from one end to another that is fixed from transmitter to receiver that is fixed so tv or radio broadcast can be classified as a simplex mode of transmission the other that is a half duplex transmission in which we can communicate both way but not at the same time uh, it can be example like um, it's a two-way radio system like you can say uh, a walkie talkie with this walkie talkie or with this radio two-way radio system we can communicate even we both can communicate but one signal can be transmitted in one direction so that is basically uh, a half duplex system uh, if we have two um, people having um, walkie talkie in their hands every single person can communicate with the other but only one signal that can be propagated through the uh, this wireless medium only one direction can be possible for one time that is half duplex system right uh, this is done when we off the receiver circuitry during transmission so when we transmit the receiver circuitry from that device will be turned off then only this can uh, work as a transmitting device and the other side when it is it is receiving the transmission circuitry will be turned off the third category of serial communication is full duplex communication in which both transmitters as well as receivers uh, transmitter as well as receiver can send or receive the data at the same time normally a telephone conversation is an example 
of a full duplex system because over the telephone channel we can we uh, can communicate uh, from the transmitting end as well as from the receiving end at the same time uh, using the full full duplex communication now uh, the term that is uh, that we have talked about initially uh, um, that is serial communication serially uh, data can be sent in C synchronous mode as well as in asynchronous mode synchronous transmission suggests that the data is sent in blocks at a constant rate a rate means number of data bytes or data blocks or data packets per second that means how many data byte bits can be transmitted per second that is uh, data rate constant rate so data which is sent through the channel in terms of blocks and we send the data at a constant speed at a constant rate number of bits per second is constant that is synchronous transmission the constant rate means the frequency of transmission and reception are same for both transmission and reception and that is why we can say that transmission and reception can take place simultaneously the start end of the block are identified with specific bytes when we design a block containing data bits from different channels we need to specify some bytes some specific bytes need to be added at the start as well as at the end of the packet so that we can at the at the end of the block so that we can understand that one block is completely received so synchronous transmission is used for high transmission speeds for more than 20 kilobits per second 20000 bits per second if we want to transmit more than 20000 bits per second then we should use synchronous transmission and if we want to achieve uh, less speed then we can use uh, asynchronous as well here is example of the synchronous mode of transmission the transmitter circuit as well as a receiver circuit is connected with a combined clock that serves the transmitting circuit as well as the receiving circuit both so the clock frequency at which the data which is being transmitted from the transmitter end will be received by the receiver end at the same time at the same frequency with the same frequency so uh, the data packet data block which we have talked about is uh, that we need to add some synchronization bits in the beginning as well as in the end just to identify that one complete block is transmitted over a period of time so in this example i have mentioned this sync sync and this sync2 bits for synchronization bits for identification of a particular uh, block or a particular uh, data block, right asynchronous communication that means each character each data character has a bit to identify its start and one or two bits to identify its end now when we try to send data in the form of characters in the form of combination of bits then we need to identify what is the process to start the data packet and what is the process to identify the end of the data packet so to start to identify we need to have a bit to identify the start bit and one or two bits are used to identify the end of that particular block data block data character in other way a data character is identified individually thus characters can be sent at any time in the same way it is transmitted right each character is identified individually when a pattern in which a start bit is end is added and after a particular set of data uh, one or two end bits are added when we receive the data at the receiving end this start bit and end bit we will identify so that the complete data from that frame from that character can be identified so characters can be sent at any time there is no fixed time whether we will um, uh, apply this clock frequency uh, from the uh, at the transmitting end as well as the receiving end at the same time or at different different times we don't bother because 
the characters can be identified at uh, by using a particular start bit as well as end bits the bit format used for transmitting the synchronous asynchronous serial data is called basically a frame so we are talking about the data character so we transmit the data character in terms of frames that frame includes the starting bit as well as one or two end bits when no data is being sent the signal line is a constant high level to starting data character is indicated by the line going low for one bit time and usually it is called the start bit now uh, how to identify when the data transmission is started or data frame is available uh, we can uh, identify using when the the output of the line goes low for at least for uh, one bit that means we have started the data uh, transmission of the data right let's see with the help of some example this is a transmitter and a receiver and over the channel we are transmitting this particular data this is basically the data d0 to d7 8 bit of continuous data serial data the clock that are applied to the transmitting as well as receiving mode receiving uh, circuits are not synchronous that is why we we do not connect the clocks of these two uh, ports initially we are transmitting one and we are, when we are about to start the transmission of the data then we goes low for one bit duration this this time this time is of one bit that means we have identified that our frame has started the very first bit is d0 and continuously d7 and when we give another high for a particular bit duration it may be one or two that means we'll end the um, frame so this eight bit is received by the receiver in in asynchronous mode the data bits are then sent out on the line one followed by the other here the least significant bit is sent out first obviously d0 will be sent first and d7 will be sent later the data bit is followed by a parity bit which is used to check for errors it may include the parity bits so that we can check whether we have received the correct uh, combination of bits or not so we can include um, the parity bits to check the errors if the data uh, which we received from the receiver is having some errors then we can rectify or by some techniques or we can uh, ask the transmitter to send the same frame again after the data bits and parity bits the signal bits is returned high for one to two bit time to identify that there is an end of character and that is referred to stop bit now based on that we classify the baud rate b a u d baud baud rate right so this baud rate it is basically measured in bits per second number of bits transmitted per second and that is calculated by the time between signal transition so when we talk about asynchronous transmission then we must focus our study uh, how much baud rate we want and how much baud rate it is received by uh, the same process so this is basically the transmission that takes place for example this is the masking bit and this uh, is a zero for one bit that means after this point we have started the data it may be zero it may be one it may be zero it may be one it may be zero it may be one so depending on at what time after what time the data is uh, data transition occurs so for example if a logic one represented by plus 5 volt and logic 0 is represented by 0 or minus 5 volt that depends so from this 1 bit to 0 bit this is 1 for example this is 0 how long it is 1 and how long it takes for being 1 to 0 the transition time so that is basically uh, the time between signal transition so when we calculate the inverse of the signal transition that will be termed as baud rate so for example if the signal is changing after every 6.3 millisecond then in that case 
the baud rate will be simply 1 by 6.3 into 10 power minus 3 that is of milliseconds so it will be in seconds and that will be given by 158th baud rate commonly the baud rates we use is 300 600 1200 2400 4800 9600 and 19200 but that's not compulsory we can use uh, even smaller than that even more than that uh, but we have a limitation to use uh, more than that because 20,000 bits per second if we achieve more than, than that uh, baud rate that means that will uh, come uh, that will be effectively used um, for uh, by using synchronous mode of serial transmission right so we'll uh, use more uh, less than uh, 20,000 okay this is the baud rate for example this is the uh, uh, example and you need to calculate the baud rate the bit time is given as a 0.83 millisecond because 0.83 millisecond after 0.83 millisecond this bit will become will change its state so one bit time is 0.83 millisecond so if we uh, want to calculate baud rate then it will be simply 1 by 0 0.83 millisecond so that will be 1 into 10 power 3 into one and divide by 0.3 so we can uh, use uh, this one zero zero into 10 power 3 divided by uh, 83 so you can calculate the answer that will be the baud rate okay because one bit of 0.83 millisecond so the baud rate is calculated by uh, one by bit time how um, much time a bit is taken that is time between signal transitions and if we calculate the inverse of the signal transition time that means we will calculate the baud rate okay next is when we discuss these um, serial input and output data serial communication so when we have we are uh, referring this particular topic in terms of uh, age rate 5 microprocessor so uh, in H085 microprocessor, we have exclusively uh, uh, a serial port, dedicated serial port that can be used for serial data communication. So um, we have uh, two types of instructions uh, through which we can access the serial uh, port. And the first one is SIM, that is set interrupt mask that is used to uh, masking the interrupt as well as the serial communication. So uh, I'm just giving you a, an example that we can use um, a serial data port using the uh, programming of the edge rate from microprocessor that is by using SIM instruction. For example, uh, immediately I have moved 8080 hexadecimal number in accumulator. So this will be 1000000, right? And in, in the next uh, instruction, we set the carry flag as one. STC command we use to set the carry flag and when we rotate accumulator right through carry that means when we are accumulator right the data bit is shifted from this bit to this bit right and this bit the MSB will be emptied so that will be covered by the carry flag okay so uh, and this zero will comes in the carry flag so after when we have set the carry flag one so this msb will become one because the carry flag will comes into the msb part and rest all bits are shifted to one bit right and then this last zero will go into the carry flag so this uh, will be the accumulator and carry flag will be zero after the operation right and this command rar will give you the data which is available in the accumulator that is c zero 8, 4, 12, I'll with C, and the other one is 0, C, 0, hexadecimal. So when we talk about this uh, SIM instruction, that means SIM instruction has a particular format. It takes the data from the accumulator, A. A, at a particular time, when the SIM instruction is getting executed, will have data that is C, 0, H. Now, C, 0, that means this bit is 1, and this bit is 1, and all other are 0. That means we do not have mask any particular uh, bit right we do not bother for these bits because we basically want to transmit this particular bit into the uh, through the serial port right so serial output data pin this one bit this bit the maximum significant most significant bit msb can be read out from the serial output port and that is enabled 
using the this d6 pen if it is one then the serial output data is available that means the data can be read, uh, read from the serial output uh, pin otherwise if it will be zero then the serial output data will be disabled and in that particular point that particular time we cannot read out the data from the serial output data uh, through this we can effectively say that if we want to enable the transmission of the data then we need to have this pin as one so if we have checked that this d6 bit is one after executing the sim instruction the most significant bit present in the accumulator will be transferred to the serial output data using software techniques uh, software instructions that is sim the same instruction that uh, similar instruction not same the similar instruction is rim and when we uh, interpret the rim data that means we are taking uh, the input the data as an input into the accumulator so whatever data is available in the um, accumulators most significant bit that uh, sorry in the serial input uh, data that will come into the accumulators most significant bit after the execution of rim instruction so the data which is available in sid pen will come and replace the data by t7 of the accumulator that is the most significant bit of the accumulator using the rim instruction rim instruction uh, is used for read interrupt mask as well as in input the serial data from the sid pin of the microprocessor okay